Right. So you just want to jump in into Atlanta, well, season two, Robin right. season. Yeah, this yeah. Robin season, right? So basically, this season, uh, they basically follow up from the events of it. Kind of more, more or less follows up, almost identical, well, exactly, or some time slightly later from the events, the end of season one, where you find out where Un has been staying this entire time, which is yeah. in a goddamn, <laughs> in a goddamn storage storage facility, there. Yeah. Uh, I, I, this, I I assume it's like a couple of weeks after. Um, Right. Yeah, so he's stuff, right. But I could be wrong. Yeah. So he's been he's been he's been essentially well. They found out he well, somebody they, they found out he was there. I mean, it's really easy to tell if somebody's sleeping in a storage facility. It's not hard to find out. Right. Uh, the idea that you can hide out and it for too long is kind of BS. Anyway, he gets in. Um, he he gets well. It's, he gets make not made out and they they effect, for effectively for lack of a better term evict him. Even though it don't really count. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the first episode starts off with him going by his uncle to sort some matters out involving where you're gonna stay and who you're gonna talk to, and they start with that whole thing. And the first episode is really really funny in my opinion. Oh yes, it is. It is. It is. It starts off pretty dark though, but the end is right. pretty hilarious. Yeah. yeah. You're right, and so the the whole season is called Robin Season for a good reason because everything is involving some type of crime or something involving somebody being stolen from, somebody stealing something, something yeah. along those lines. But it's and not yeah, and as, um, it's not as, done in an obvious, straightforward, literal way. It's done in a workable, sometimes metaphorical, sometimes subtextual. But it's there, and you can find it if you look for it. Yeah, um, I was go- I was going to say um, Darius Epps, who's played once again quite brilliantly by yeah. um, the Keith Stanfield had said in, right. the, in the first episode of this new season that because Christmas is coming up, yeah, people people want that money, Jared. You know, if they if, yeah, they, can't, if right. they have no way to earn it, they're going to steal from it, you know? Enough said. Yeah. But yeah, continue. Right. Um, so right. So the season works. And basically, the purpose of the season also is to get into the working psychology of earn from what a successful... Okay, somebody who has, as a black man, what is put, when you have potential to be successful, but you're failing. And yeah. you're failing in a really interesting way. And there's a kind of working, you know, theme of self-destruction going through the season, especially with Earn's character. Oh, and you yeah, see that yeah. build up. And it, it comes a really great culmination at the end, where, you know, where Earn had to make a decision. Yes. And that was, I thought, was really, really well done. Um, the season is, it's some dark episodes. You make some good, good, it has some funny shit. Um, episode one is with the uncle, which is Crocodile Man, and that's really yeah, well done. Uh, Cat, uh, uh, Epps- Cat, Cat Williams did not expect to see him. Right, that but, guest. Yeah. yeah, that that catch man. <laughs> that's cracking up. When he show up, I was like, oh, he's the uncle. Okay, yeah. um, I'm going to mention that he's what we're not. You know, you didn't see him, but you say, okay, I'm finding me the uncle. I think he's some other normal actor. And I realize, damn, Cat Williams. But his character works in the, the, the context of a potential of what to avoid now. Yeah. You know, that's you know, the, the trap for the don't become like me kind of thing. Then. Yes, uh, yes and then um, see, I forget I, what I, I forget the that, actual um, run of the episodes. Uh, sorry, as you see that though, the song that they play, Dred, um, <laughs> when when we do see the, the, the alligator, um, that, right. was, that was just brilliant. That was just a stroke right. of genius, Dred. I love that, right? Yeah, um, then the, the episode moves on where they got into. Um, right, right. So episode two now is Spot and Waves. That is where you meet um, <laughs> this fellow for the first time. Uh, yeah, Ting friend. Um, Un's friend. I forgot his name. Yeah. Un's friend. Um, Ting's uh, what do you call him? Paper Boy's friend. Yeah. Oh, right, right. Hey, right, right. Paper Boy's friend. Yes, yes. Sorry about that. Yeah. 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 Tracy. Yeah. I, I just like uh, steal shoes. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Right. Yeah. Tracy's just one sociopath. Yeah, um, boy, but yeah, you will learn something. Yeah, you learn something unfortunate about Tracy. You know, going forward, and I, I, it's something I don't think the show really addressed particularly. But I thought it was going to get into that, and but you kind of, they kind of hint up on it. Hmm. Um, that the, then the third episode is Money Bag Shorty. This was with that uh, Una and Una happened to go on a date with Van. I think if I remember correctly. Yeah, it, it was when it was when right. they, they actually just decided to go out. And it was right. just um, and, Un just doing a yeah, bunch of yeah. dumb shit and this. Right, and right, 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 right. So Un, Un got a lot of money. He had to go and spend this money and he decided to carry on a date, spend his money. He made the mistake of you're learning. This is something that you're not showing a lot of, this make a lot of black people paranoid, which is, you know, the whole your money no good here kind of thing now. Yeah, so you yeah. see that at the, at the theater where she played the money, he pay a hundred. She says she don't accept some that high and you see this white guy come after and he pays the exact same bill. Yes, I think yes. it's a hundred dollar bill. Yeah, there's a hundred dollar bill or fifty bill. I can make it and out. And it was a hundred. And 
Right, and yeah. he they accept the money, and it's a little stuff like that now. Yeah, I um, uh, also also love the the intro. Um, they was poking fun at um, that that white mother who was singing the, the lyrics to Finn Staples North North. Right, 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 right. Yeah, right. Yeah, the parody of right. Yeah, the parody of Big Boy. That was good. This new song that People Boy came um put out basically. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, they 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 struck to one of my favorite episodes of the season. This is episode four, Helen. Okay, this so is you, where you enjoy that one, alright. One of my favorite episodes. Not my favorite, but one of my favorite. This is where um <laughs> where you get to see Van back a little bit of history with Van. Um why Van could speak German so well. You learn a little bit about that, you learn yeah. that history. Um you learn a little bit about, you know, Van and her friend and that kind of borderline sociopathy you see within the black community involving yes, yeah. color and who who should be pregnant and whatnot. And that whole stereotypes and what to avoid. And then Ern be even like a just I guess straight up say it, Ern was just being a cunt this episode. Um <laughs> yeah. just being such a such a douchebag, so terrible this episode. And it's, again, you, you see the the selfless the, the working self destruction with him now. Yes. And she connecting with this guy who could speak German and he thinking about it but not really making a big deal about it. He didn't want to go and it's just you know, just little simple things like, you know, doing something that your 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 significant other want to do and you can't do it because you have attitude. Right. You know, and these yeah. these little things. And I thought out, I thought it was a great episode. It's a great character piece for the two of them. Um, but yeah, yeah it, it was, was one decent, of was decent, yeah, but yeah, one of her own low points. But it's a, I thought it was a, I, it's an episode I enjoyed from a just a personality standpoint. Right. Uh, okay. Then this episode is close to my favorite. It, it is one of my favorite, but it's close. Not my favorite favorite, but close close to number one of this season, which is Barbershop. I love this episode. This is with with Paperboy and his working barber, barber called Bibi. Yeah. And oh my gosh, BB is a character. You, 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 you straight up wanted to strangle BB this episode. And the final scene of the episode is hilarious for me because um, you understand the word of BB at the end. Yeah. After all that shit to put people boy through, um, <laughs> um, yeah, you get to see that that real unfortunate ended where if people boy is like, wait, nobody has daughter cut me here. <laughs> they just leave it at that. I thought that was a hilarious ending. Yeah. Um, yeah so. Then. We get to episode episode six, which is uh, one for the history books, in my opinion, in yep. terms of great television. The best episode of the best episode Atlanta season. Yeah. ever. Yeah, this was, did one not the expect the shit to be in so TV brilliant. History. Because because <laughs> Lakeet Stanfield, yeah, Lakeet Stanfield was hyping it, eh? Uh, because we didn't get to see much of of Daryl, Daryl for this episode. Didn't get to see much of him. Not sure what he was doing this season. And then they hit it with this bomb this episode. And they said, oh, well, we're going to get a nice Daryl episode because Daryl is so quirky and funny. And then they hit it with this episode called Teddy Perkins. Holy yeah, shit. Boy. Holy shit. <laughs> this was like, so good. I was, good. I was just hearing about this. Uh, everybody yeah. hyping up this thing. Everybody seeing it when yeah. the best things ever. And I saw it and I was like, yeah, yeah when the best things ever and, happened yeah, to Yeah, and they, they, they get into something that is almost never spoken about. Never spoken, spoken about. But you, you, you know that it's always there in the ether. And it's basically the idea of, of quote unquote, black genius pathology. You know, what it takes to be a genius and that trade off of what it does to your mental health. You know, the, the, old, the old joke, you know, genius and insanity is, you know, yeah. cousins now. Yeah. And boy, it, they really get to see the, you know, the, the really dark side of that. And it, it worked in the context of, of, uh, of Daryl. You know, Daryl's character is not, we're not sure how talented he is at anything, but you know, he's a quirky dude and he has some yeah. insight to the world. And you get to see, in a sense, a kind of dark mirror of him. Because this whole, you're quirky and you're strange, yeah, 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 it have a potential if you go into some really dark depths with it. And I, I personally know people like that. And you know, people who, if if it, if things didn't turn out a certain way, they would have gone to be incredibly successful. You're sure of that. And because they're geniuses and, and so on and so on. And then because they just couldn't handle this thing and they just handle a situation so magnificently badly. Right. Because things work out, they, they have this complete emotional meltdown at the wrong, to- wrong time in their life. And yeah, that's life is a total mess now. And they, they're brilliant people otherwise, right? But you know, and it's not it's not just a black thing or a white thing or anything like that. It's, it's, it's relatively immune from the concept of race. But within the context of race, you see it with music and a lot of musical celebrities. Yeah. And then you have this character, character called Teddy, played brilliantly by Donald Glover himself. Yeah, oh my God. Um, yeah. yeah. It took me a while, it took me a while to pick up it was Donald Glover because I was watching the face and I was like, all right, the eyes look familiar. Do you have a very specific eye? He's look at you yeah. now. I was, uh, I was looking at the cool. lips actually, the way how You're right. yeah. the, the mouth as well the also mouth was, was yeah, yeah. But the eyes I find was when is when I picked it up and I was like, oh, that's not Donald Glover. I was like, oh shit, this real bad. Yeah. <laughs> then um, they had but, but, his, but his performance, sorry, his performance was just was I mean, at first it was it was 
it was weird. It was weird, right? It was right. Like, oh, it's not okay. Football. This is like it's not right, it's like, like okay, okay man, rich yeah, dude. Kind of, yeah, kind of a weird take on, on Michael Jackson. Okay, I get. Right. But then the more as you know, when the when the story right. starts to get deeper, is when you realize yeah. how creepy this dude is. And then right. you started, brought yeah, in the next I was like, okay, yes. Um, red, red, red. Oh, <laughs> you know, alarms going off. This is fucked up. Okay, right. what's going on? What's yeah. going on? Yeah. And it's little little red flags over the place, huh? Yeah, the way how it ends, by the way, though. Yeah. Well, sorry, right. that climax, it, by it, the way. That climax. Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't lie. So I dark. I jump for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it catch you off guard. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. The yeah. Way how it ends <laughs> where they play that that CB Wonder song. Brilliant. Yes, yeah. That's what I like about it. They do the whole, like, you know, the last time we got something like this where it had a, a song, and then the song could be reinterpreted in such a dark manner, which is um, Gardens of the Galaxy, right? Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy had one song going through the entire movie, and yeah, it was a little on the nose, but it the song and the, the subtext of the song become progressively darker when the context of the movie, you know, illustrate and highlight through a new lens throughout the film, right? Yeah. And this movie do the same thing with, with the Stevie Wonder song. It's like, yeah, you could interpret this song as this, but yeah, another person could take that and flip it emotionally in one of the most pathological ways imaginable. No? And yeah. be, because they had the subtext of what, musical music again quote unquote musical geniuses go through and i will talk about this when we talked about it last time the idea of utilitarianism in in, in creativity now yeah. is it necessary to be a suffering agent and be creative is it necessary to be a, a musical jesus and, and and have a relatively normal or, or um uh well-balanced childhood right and good, you're wondering point, you're not sure right yeah it's unclear cause, cause, cause because there's that one scene sorry where um where, yeah. where you, that that um that that home video we have seen his dad right. um you know basically right. Not torturing, yeah, yeah. more or less pushing his son to play yeah, exactly. the piano. That, that was like a right. very, and it, very deep yeah. uh, pulse. And pulse you can scene, find, sorry. I mean, well, the, uh, the most obvious person was Michael Jackson, right? Of the course, most yeah. obvious, obvious person was Michael Jackson. That was like the most on the face person. But yeah, it had more, I mean, you know, other musical people, geniuses, who, or, or just, I wouldn't go as far as geniuses, just people who we consider very, very talented, but such troubled, ta- li- um, troubled lives now, yeah. um, themselves. I mean, um, um, troubled man himself, right? Uh, uh, oh gosh, it's up in my mind right now. Um, Mar- Marvin Gaye, Marvin Gaye, oh. right? Marvin Gaye is one. Oh, yes, um, yes, yes, sorry, sorry. Why did I see James Bros song "Trouble Man"? My bad. Right. Oops. Yeah. 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 Right. Marvin Gaye himself. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, really sad and unfortunate what happened to him. Of course, I mean, and it's really you know, it's from the way he was raised and how that affected his right. music. Right. Exactly. Before he died. Um, of course, Michael Jackson himself. I mean, Joe Jackson is the worst. Joe oh, Jackson's yes, like yes. scummiest, scummiest scum fuck that you can ever think about in a while. I mean, he's like, he's to me up day with like all of them real shitty people in, in Hollywood now. Yeah. Um, uh, Prince, Prince himself. Prince had a really, really shitty, uh, abusive childhood. His early on, really, really shitty life early course, going on. Yeah. Which, and which he sure. addressed in, in a way in um, the Purple Rain movie, by the way. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. And... You know, but the thing is, these people, the thing is, trauma like that, you don't really get over. And it's it real hard to exercise those demons over time. Course, you're not yeah. sure what's going on. Like, even actors and them, you think they're clean and then they come back. Like, what happened to Philip Seymour Hoffman and all of that stuff, right? Yes. And yeah, this this movie just does... This, sorry, this episode yeah, 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 of... Atlanta just, <laughs> yeah, all right, yeah. But it's, this episode of Atlanta did this so excellently. It's so well shot very well because I, again hero i don't know who does this cinema talk very exactly but i think hero Mawai is involved in it well, where you get this every, the episode so right yeah. every episode does this brilliant um you know everything looking like everything everybody going back to greeny nowadays you notice that yeah 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 i've noticed that, that. they mentioned look? it to me before and when i was looking at it even though it was teddy tp was like yeah seeing that that green there you know in the, in the right visuals. but but it's used, it's used so well, though. Every episode does it very, very well. Yeah. Um, but this episode, it, it works so, so well because everything's so dark and, you know, underlit now. And it, you, you, want, you, you would think, oh, well, Green gone fuck up the shot. Nope. For the yeah. sake of the story, it really feels like an old horror movie at times. It does, and yeah. It just works so perfectly with, with this episode. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and, and, I, I and speaking, speaking of episode. horror movies, speaking of horror movies, sorry like that. Sorry to cut you there, but speaking of horror movie, yeah. um, you're writing in this way. Yeah. writing in this this is this is not like oh yeah. i'm making fun of of the horror genre or the thriller genre right this feels like a legit thriller like what jordan peele did yeah. to get out this was what yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it was it was on that yeah right. it was on, it's pretty much like, on that level yeah like there pretty was, there was, there was level moments level. of humor like there was that that break where um darius was calling um people boy and they had that little yeah. um you know that little comedic moment there but that's yeah, still yeah, just yeah, to yeah, keep the right. audience all on edge now, you know? And it uh, yeah, exactly. Perfectly, yeah. Yeah. So, like yeah. I said before, this is, yeah, this is the best episode of, of Atlanta, hands yeah. down. Yeah. It's, it's one of the this, greatest this, things this. that's ever happened in television. 
Yes, right, I said it. It is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was it was really really well done. When it when it it have layers to it, it have layers to it. Yes, that was a bunch yeah. of people and, as you and it warrants more viewings. Like, you, yeah, you exactly. Can't just watch that, that episode once in this un, unless you're like terribly disturbed by it. Although yeah. yes, the climax was stupid, but me, I just wanted to right. watch that again and see the little things like yeah. when the camera was there, yeah. and, you know the you know yeah. parallels and all that kind of shit. Now, so yeah, yeah, totally love yeah. that episode. But um, yeah, well done. Yeah. Well, one of my one of my favorite episodes. Well, this skipping over champagne poppy but, which was the, right episode seven is, episode seven is the worst episode of the season um it it just kind of felt needless no right? i didn't right i didn't hate it all that much but it, it really didn't work for me overall and the running joke was well drake is hispanic or drake is mexican which is kind of funny i suppose not yeah, that interesting also like drake um, isn't there however um but this right, one is, well, drake, is, um, is there, vanessa's drake. episode um vanessa of course played by right. zazi beats who we'll talk about yeah. later with deadpool too but right. I don't know, like, I get the idea, okay, all these right. girls going into Drake's crib to have a party, right. and he's not there, but it's all about showing off on Instagram, like, yeah, right. I was in the and mansion, it, well, it blah, was blah, a nice, blah, but... It was a nice, right, it was a nice, like, little, like, dressed-down episode, in the sense that it was just breaking down all the bullshit that is going on, like, the whole Instagram fake thing, which was funny. I thought yes, that was great. Yes, yes. And um, true. <laughs> Vanessa, Vanessa herself just not giving a fuck, like, she she have a, she have a, her, her ratchet moments at times now, so she just straight up, like, just gone in the man closet, <laughs> yeah. you know? Where, where the jacket are, like, hey, what the fuck? Like, you would have think some bodyguards are, would have, like, find himself, like, not going in during bedroom or everything, but he wasn't coming to the party, nobody expected him to be there. Um, the, the, it had this guy who was just waiting there the entire time, and he was, like, um, sketchy and suspect as fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, he it had his, I, think, I forget where he was. Uh, but this guy was just real suspect. Oh um, yes, yes, yes. I know you talk about. Waiting outside the bathroom. Gonna bring back that character. Right. I thought it got him somewhere. Like, I'm gonna get you this. Yeah, thought, I'm gonna I get thought, you that. I'll be yeah, right yeah, back. I'll yeah, be right back. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, I thought that was going somewhere darker, but it just just had a dismiss and it was all right, cool. Um, yeah. um then, then we get to my yeah, third favorite episode, there. which was on uh, woods. Um. Woods this was one, good. Woods, Woods, was, yeah, Woods, right. Woods, Woods, Woods was real good. The, so so the, some people, like, so I know a couple of people who tell you that this this episode is actually creepier and, and better done than, than Teddy Perkins. I don't agree with them. But I, I so. get where you're... Yeah, yeah I get where you're coming from. But then it, it right. goes dark. Later on, what did what did do it, it what did right what did do it with with, with Paperboy because Paperboy is robbed what for the second time this this season, yeah right. He he's almost killed this time. This time it really looks like if uh, you're wondering if you're gonna die. Yes, and yes. then they they flip it back and they make it so dark in the sense that it's clearly that the guild set that up eh, and set him up now. Well, you know, he decided is, to leave. I didn't, even, I didn't even think about that. I just thought. No, I, just, I make that connection just almost immediately. Wrong, like, wrong place, wrong time. No, no, no. No point. No point. With, I get. Um, well, Sierra, that's her name. And what right. happens is I, that I, she were to be imagine him, but he's just like, no, fuck this shit. This is not me. And you know, don't don't tell right. me what to do. And then afterwards, right. he, he gets robbed, and then you know, he's almost left yeah. to die in the woods. No, I, yeah. I, I, I suspect that is the case because it just seemed too, too suspect. Like he walk in and. He walk in there and she just happened to be she right when she 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 leave him when he leave her sorry um he busts out and she, you know she thinking well you know is, is this business thing and then could she want to be this power couple thing now but when he like reject that and then that dicey will probably with people boy again when keeping it real goes wrong now he's <laughs> yes, kind of exactly that, yeah um he's kind of that just want to quote unquote stay real and she attitude is that no fuck you you could never be real that's bullshit exactly and when he leave her you get the feeling that she just kind of scorn and just kind of say, all right, rob this nigga now. That's basically what it feel like. But you know, from, from it, a it story way too coincidental. It, it does make sense uh, when you think about it. It does right. make it, sense. It felt way too coincidental as yeah. watching it. I just watched the episode and this, she just make a phone call. You know, she got on the phone right after he leave. Eh? You notice yes, that? Yes, he did. Uh, yes, she did, sir. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And that's what, so that's why it makes me think that she, that whoever them fellas was, was connected to that now. Like right. rob him up, rough him up. Or we, I would think as far as kill him, but just rough him up this episode now he goes into the forest and he meets this person who you're not sure if he's there you're not sure if he's a ghost you're not sure what's going on with that um the guy is this mental patient essentially and yes. he, he it's implied you know it's implied or the subtext of that is that it's his dad as well because he mentions his mother and he mentions a lot of things and then he mentions he shouldn't be making these mistakes he'll get destroyed and it's this kind of, again a warning of the, the future now is his paperwise version of it because the episode starts off with his mother and it, it's implied that the mother, well, the mother recently died now. Yeah. And you're not sure how people were handling that because again, that is something that people were kind of asked to address and handle. Of course. And yeah. you know, we see. Well, we we're going to talk about the episode involving um, that after. And second, well, yeah, yeah. 
then he goes through this this basically this horror session and he gets out and he then he just decides to go into this like uh, where does a, a 7-eleven a convenience store yeah. Yeah. yeah and somebody bounces him up and the episode ends very unfortunately ironically which is him taking the picture and not selling out quote unquote no. So yeah, he kind of exactly, quote unquote, he had because because he teeth on him and it's just like exactly. But well, I, he, I he he avoid, but he avoids. He goes, he finds himself on Instagram because he really wants to avoid the Instagram thing. Yeah. And it just comes back, kind of comes back on Fortune full circle again. This people were kind of taking an L again when keeping it real goes wrong. Yes, this exactly. People, and that's the whole episode. And right. I, yeah, it was a solid episode on its own. It was, I don't think it was. It was good. Good. I don't think it's as good as the Tony Perkins episode. Oh, no, 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 definitely not. Still, it's a really strong episode that really tired thinking about what's going on in people, boy, psychologically. Yeah. Uh, um, so my, my second favorite episode um, just turned out to be uh, Naughty Border, which is episode nine. Yes. Um, I love, love the episode. setup of it, which is like, yes. you know, Ern, Darius, Tracy, um, Alfred, and it's just like, hey, we, we go in into this this um uh, this, right. this college, we're gonna perform. Right. We hook it up with right. this girl, but the girl kinda like real on on, on um on people boy. It's like when he fucks right. you real creepy and shit. And then it's just like yeah. one one shenanigan after the next shit. Right. <laughs> one okay. shot. Yes. One shot that I yes. love though was was when um I think is is tree C dread. this this is yeah. when the girl was um cussing out um people boy, right? And he felt as well to beat them up. I see right. Trace. He just come from the right. Plow! No way. Yeah. One yeah. punch down. Okay. Laugh so my this, ass off for that. Gonna talk about, this is going to talk about the, the, you know, Earn's arc and the self-destruction part, right? Yes. Here's yes. where the difference between Earn, right? So here's the problem with Earn, right? And again, I, I, I know a lot of people like this and I myself kind of go through situations like this where you're smart. You're a smart guy. Right, but you're black and people have to you have to kind of prove yourself, right? Yeah, but yeah. the problem is that your, your intelligence, so most of your intelligence is leveraged off of um, a world that you're not living in. So imagine if you're accustomed to the amenities of the world, but you're living in the wilderness. It's kind of like that with 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 uh, some some smart black people, especially oh. black men, where they will put themselves in a space where they can fix a situation only because what you take for granted being in a quote unquote white world. Right? It's kind of a big kind of broad statement but what you're accustomed to doesn't work out the same way and getting people to work for you or help you out in that way and that's Earn's problem right. so when Earn, Earn make a decision you have to get to take he has to put so much mental weight on his shoulders because people fucking around yeah. and then he himself will slip up and make mistakes and when he make mistakes is make for bigger bigger problems by far than when them make mistakes it's yeah, kind of like a second yeah. order mistake now. And the analogy I was like using is kind of think, think of a, a, a situation of white collar crime versus um, blue collar crime. Blue collar crime is bad and it's an issue, but it doesn't break society. But when white collar crime happen, we don't intuitively um, get angry at it at, 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 at face value. But white collar crime is by far more destructive to society in, in a grander sense, in the longer run, right? Right. That's why I, I that's the analogy. And that's what Earn is. And if if you compare Earn to Tracy, that's what happening. If Tracy is the blue-collar motherfucker. He's the kind of the guy who's he steal the shoes, but stealing shoes don't matter in the grand scheme because shoes. Right? Yeah, right, right. But when Earn but when Earn make the mistake now, he make a mistake by doing this thing, putting people in a situation, not planning for your hotel, thinking that he being clever, and yeah. then when, when things go wrong, it go catastrophically wrong. And now he had a meltdown in the worst way. And oh he hit the low point for his character. And, and I, I love this episode. Like, it, it, it felt real, but a few real sort of right. real Yeah, story. exactly. But and the, 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 like, the, uh, and the thing is what I like about the, what I like about the, the episode too is that Paperboy immediately picks up on this. Right? Mm-hmm. Paperboy understand the problem. Like look, Tracy is a t- is a shitty person. But you would somebody in Paperboy's position would obviously prefer Tracy over Earn, by far, when you think about it. When you think about it, Tracy's preferable to Earn. Yes, Tracy's an idiot. Yeah. But when Tracy do shit, it don't crash the same way now. You, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. You think of, right, is is the, is, the, is the stopwatch problem. One little thing going in your gears and your plan and your, your, your plan fall apart immediately. Exactly. Right? And that's why this episode works so well. And that, that scene when it was in the, in the frat house, in the white frat house, right? <laughs> Yeah. It's a it's a real funny scene at the dark and wherever it, it is, is. But when dark, when yeah. people were when people was talking to Earn, I find that scene was so goddamn powerful because you could tell Earn real get hit hard with that eh, from emotionally. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And then he walks up. When people right, right, tell him, yeah. yeah. When people tell him, like, look, you're fucking up and you're fucking up in a real big way, and I had to get rid of you know, like, look, you had to turn things around, and it's not for you know. Yeah. And I I was like, yeah, I totally understand where Earn because Earn in a sense too smart for the what you're doing, but if it's if it's you're supposedly too smart for it, but at the same time you're still fucking it up. 
So it hurt in his ego even more now. Yeah. And they still never address Earn's arc when of uh, why does he leave Princeton? Never address oh, yes, it. Yes, he never did, yeah. Never did. So it's something to do with his kind of working self-destruction now. When things don't go, go right, have a total meltdown. Right. Right? And th- that characterization really built up in this this episode 9, and it worked so well, I thought. Uh, by the end of the episode with him and Tracy, which is so funny. Yeah, it, so it, well it was, done. Yeah, but, but I felt so sorry <laughs> yeah. for him, Jen. I was like, yeah, just, yeah. just, 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 just like, stop it. Just, just stop it. Just stop yeah, it. yeah, because he had, he, had, he had a complete meltdown. Like, yep. because when things go wrong, and it, it don't take much. It just takes somebody that's like, Slightly fucking wrong. He, he doesn't take this girl into account. This girl being a complete mental patient. Yeah. Like he thinks, oh, well, this girl love paper, but she gonna take care of him now. It's like, well, no. Like it don't take much. You, you don't know what time bomb you put. You're working with now. Yeah, and right? again, remember, remember, it's all about him wanting to make money too now. So, yeah, Mike. No, but that's that's your point. Point. He tried to save money by not staying in a hotel. Yeah. Remember, you think about what they do, right? They try to do this Airbnb bullshit. By staying by this girl place, but the girl is a mental patient. He didn't he didn't pick up on that. Again, that's all part of the little. You're not sure now. You're betting. You're making bets that nobody else could uh, uh, take into account and address. And then when it fails, it fails so much worse than Tracy stealing some shoes or Tracy having like a, 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 a his own kind of meltdown by just punching the guy. But Tracy was doing his job yeah. at the end of the day, right? And right. I thought that characterization worked quite well in this episode. It did. Um, it had, and, and another yeah. thing before I forget, another thing. Um, I think it's in episode two. Remember from last season where um, where Darius. Um, had brought the, the puppies uh, to the to the fella. Right. I just and you right. expected to get paid no no because he's like, well, yo, right. me and Vanessa had to eat now. You know we daughter had to eat. Right, 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 and right, right, like, right. No, yeah. you're gonna get that until September, wherever it is. Right. And then right. bring it back up. It's like, hey, we have money now. So I think right. with, with with um with with Ern himself, he is he does come off impatient. You know, it's always about get money right. now, get this now, but he doesn't really think right. things through and, properly. And that- you know? Exactly, but and he think that's the problem because he is this, you know he's the smartest guy in the room, but you're not smart. You know, I have an old joke about it. Yeah, yeah, the smartest guy in the room, but you're not smarter than the room itself. You ever hear that statement? <laughs> okay, uh, I'm that's, not that's familiar with that, but that's a great statement, by the way. That's basically what it is. Is you know, you have people like that. They 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 smart, but they think they can just do shit on their own, and then not realizing that the whole group of people that they're dealing with have a whole system that works better than you individually with your intelligence. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you have to take that into account when you're coming into a group and understand that it's teamwork and team building. That. And I basically, well, we're just failing at that right through. Yeah, right through. Yeah. Whole season. Whole season failure. Season season one. Failing at that. Mm-hmm. Fail when it comes to, to signing a deal. They had a great one with the lawyer, which I, which I like. That coming in episode, um, the last episode, I think. Um, it, it comes back in full circle. And then uh, they, they just have him just totally fail in this episode because now he loses his laptop. <laughs> oh, yeah, boy yeah, shit, yeah. Up. Girl, total mental patient meltdown and cut up thing. He almost, the girl could I get, when she pushed, I think it's, I forget, he got pushed down stairs and he, he grabbed the girl. There's a Tracy. Um, uh, yeah. Tracy I, 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 yeah. The I think so, yeah. And, you know, right. And, you know, it just caused all these problems and these issues there. Yeah. And, so, and, and, be, and also before I forget, um, Vanessa. Vanessa kind of right. leave, kind of leave in because it's like, Pretty yeah, much, you're yeah. Doing nothing, you, you just kind of fucking yeah. up. It's like, oh, okay, well, yeah. bye. You know? Yeah, but yeah. You can still come through once in a while because, I mean, we we still have a daughter, right? So, whatever. So, the next episode right. is uh, Fubu. And episode that 10. one kind of caught me completely off guard because it's a right. flashback episode. You see Ud right. and, um, and People Boy when you were kids in middle school. Right. And this episode, this, the right. So, this episode here, in retrospect, it foreshadows uh, events that occur in the final episode, episode 11 of the season. And what it does quite well is basically you, you get to see a very important moment in in Earn's life right with this episode something happens uh, to someone and it's in the context of something that was relatively trivial and you're not sure how it had to play out um in his, his head because it really felt like luck and he's not sure what went down but it wasn't really luck in that sense and how would basically the episode was that he got a fubu ship and a big deal about you know things, and I remember this when I was in in when I was in form two and form three, which was roughly the same age, yeah. um, which is you know if you're wearing fakes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I remember thing. that. And uh, right, I, I now, shoes that were in. Yeah. Right now, personally, I never got too caught up in it. I just used to wear what I wear and then give a fuck. Um, but well done. I know a lot of people. <laughs> I know a lot of people who did it, they did give a fuck, and it was so I understood the working culture of it, and you could understand that psychology of hey, but you needed this Jordan, and you need this, this, and that, that, and so on. So I remember, I remember when it was how old I was, nine, 12 or 11. I remember my friend made the biggest fucking deal about the Jordan 97 coming out, 
Right. That was so huge to him. You know, John 97, and he said, boy, this girl in school, she had the Jordan 97, Jordan 97, and Jordan 97. And he couldn't shut the fuck up about the Jordan 97. And I was like, okay, cool. And I, I, I just wear my, my shitty little, <laughs> um, you know, it is not Reebok, but I figured it was. Um, not not Jansport. Jansport, I forget no, what it was. Jansport, Jansport. No, no, Jansport, no, it had the shoes. It had a shoes. Trojan. Trojan was the oh, shoes yeah. I used to wear. Oh, my God. Then, yeah. I, I, I never had one, Tro- but I know it was big. Right. Back in the yeah, but it was like the shitty rip-off, shoe, rip-off, rip-off sneakers, but it was a decent sneaker. It was comfortable enough for my parents, for my father to buy for me. Right. And then I stopped wearing shoes. I started wearing just straight-up normal black shoes for school anyway now, because that was the easiest thing. But yeah, it, people used to make a big deal out of that shit. And... Um, so I understood the mindset, you know, you couldn't yes. shut the fuck up about the latest this and the latest that. And this was occurring in the early 2000s, so FUBU was the biggest deal. So his mother bought a FUBU, which was most likely a ripoff because it was super cheap. And they were saying, all right, you and this other guy wearing the same FUBU shirt. And the, thing, the joke was, all right, well, what all, it had to be fake. It had to be fake. Yeah. Fake this, fake that. And well, a big part of, of ripoff <clears throat> was, was you used to actually mash up in terms of quality. If, right. if you used to have a tear or something in terms of stitching, that was the whole thing. And well, uh, if you know in retrospect, a lot of the big companies, especially Sean P.D. Did you go Sean John? Used to sell his own ripoffs. They used to do that. They used to sell their right. own fakes. So they used to make yeah. money off their fakes too. Which was which make up a lot of sense because like, yeah, why would you get away with fakes for so long with some, without somebody suing you? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, they're making money off the fakes. Um, and basically they made the whole episode about him trying to figure out whether or not he faking or not. Um, just all the usual bullshit of guilds sending you letters who like you in school. Um, if you're into this, the guild didn't like him. He didn't like, he liked this guild, but he didn't like the other guild back and them jumping on the back about it. I think he wearing a fake shirt. And uh, it, then the whole episode goes out. But then yeah. paper boy comes to the rescue when they, they had this guy who was trying to fake out. Um, he's trying to test whether or not it's a real shit. And this guy apparently could tell and he used to trust this guy's opinion. Yeah. And then Paperboy comes in and calls him out and kind of bullshits the guy and then says, no, earn as real shit. And he was just to protect his cousin and protect the cousin's ego. And the same kids now dog out the other guy completely. And then the, the end of the episode ends with this really fucked up thing where the same guy who has the other shirt apparently commits suicide. Yeah. And he just does it. And he, he like, earn now like think he get away from that now. and the episode ends with that and it was it was when they think about it how fucked up that was mm-hmm. and in this middle school now it's like wait this boy you're not sure what emotional state he is like he, he just dogging him out for, for something that's very trivial and not an issue and again suicide is not, not something that you really talk about in the black community in particular especially at that right. time and yeah somebody committed suicide because of this thing but you're not sure where he was he was on his he was emotionally on the edge when you find out that i think his parents broke up at the time and yeah, you learn that, all this bullshit. That is what happened actually, yeah. right and you only learn out you learn all that bullshit after the fact and yeah that shit was like all he had kind of thing there you right. know it you know it's little, little things that and that, that, that episode totally worked emotionally and it, course, it, then yeah. they, they they cut to they cut to you see paper boy's mom i say look you gotta stick together and so that flashes back to the early episode where you see paper boy's mom in the episode from before right yeah uh, so you say okay you're not sure what happened to people's mom mom you're not sure how she died you know she died um and they have to reference that going back forward yeah the episode is, is totally appropriate for what they're talking about because basically the episode is all right so paper boy has to go to uh concert but he's going to europe for the concert and basically that's the whole episode of them planning they have to move out uh they have to a lot of moving material because they're basically going to tour Europe for a while and people boys like well his song is incredibly popular so it's him having to do his stuff and earn what <clears throat> earns put himself now in another situation of him having to plan shit out for other people and it's just the whole episode of right, just people yeah. fucking around people fucking around people fucking around Daryl fucking around taking too long you're not sure when the movers come in they had to pay the movers extra the movers want to take a break and have lunch but they have no time for that bullshit um and just scrambling, scrambling as the manager. And because he on the edge, um, because of what people were told him, and you're not sure if people were going to fire him or when, he just have to say, well, this is kind of last chance. And the episode does a really good um, turn where, where Daryl and... Okay, so Daryl has to get a password. And they go to this, um, basically a Jewish stamp connecting thing, and they, they talk about lawyers. And they, they have this great scene, they talk about, um, are there any black lawyers? Because the people were wanted a Jewish lawyer instead of the black lawyer that they had from the, in, the, in the beginning of the episode. And well, no, sorry, it was beginning of the episode early in the early in another episode, I think. And um, 
Then what happened, boy? Oh, right. He asked him a question, which I thought was really, really good. A great, great moment right, involving right. Whether, or not a Jew, whether or not a black lawyer is better than a Jewish lawyer. And the answer he gives is excellent. Don't want to spoil it, but it's a great line. A great, great, great line. Because, because the moment is an excellent little moment in terms of American, you know, dynamics and histories and whatnot involving race. And it's a great, great line that just sums up the whole situation. And it could kind of talk about the Captain Barrel situation in that. And then what Darrell kind of tells him about you know, where he's on the edge. And then he gets a, oh, well, the episode begins to where it's revealed that um, the daughter of Vanan and Un is gifted. She's actually quite, quite intelligent. And the teacher, that is that also, that scene is also quite, quite heartbreaking because the teacher was like straight up saying, look, get the child fuck out of the school because the school is not going to serve the child particularly well. And the, the, whether or not they could afford this private school, but if they could go to the private school, they'll, they'll, off, they'll um, the child will, will flourish better. Now. And they're not sure they clearly can't afford it at their, their station in life, but the, the teacher at least tells them you should do that. Yeah, and I, she at least gave them her heads up. But if the child wasn't gifted or didn't have anything, she wouldn't tell them nothing. And she basically just compare her school to a farm, right? As in, look, you're going to just come in and come out. If you're a problem child, you're kind of fucked more or less going forward. But if you're gifted and you can take the opportunity, take it. You know, and she kind of at least gives them the heads up because they're relatively young parents still. And, you know, there's, there's the one time in your life you have to do it. And it's revealed, well, it's a really not a heartbreaking moment. It's revealed Van is doing something. Um, basically, she's moving out from the apartment she's living in. So that means it'll be kind of harder to contact um, Un and Un in contact with his daughter as well. And so it really looks like if Un is on the edge, you're not sure you're going to be fired. He... Um, most most likely going to lose well, not custody or anything like that, but going to have a lot less spending time with his with his with his family. The family is is cultivated on the relationship, even though it's strained with Van. And then the episode we get everything to come together. They get to the airport, and then the one bullshit thing that comes back at the end comes back in the ending, and Earn makes this really badass decision at the end, and it's kind of fucked up what he did, but it's awesome. I like holy shit, this is how it ends, and. Uh, that the Eddie Paperboy said, Paperboy saw what he did because it's something he did. Paperboy saw what he did, and Paperboy keeps it on simply because that is exactly the kind of shit you had to be doing, right? The, thing, the things that you think it is, this is, you know, he kind of makes the point that look, Atlanta is the Twilight Zone. What you think is up is really down, and you have to do certain things to survive, and they make that totally work. And it's really goddamn cynical. It's a really fucking cynical ending, but it's a great ending. It totally fits the season. It's a great like um glottal stop to what going forward with the characters i really really hope the show gets a third season most likely it will because this season was excellent and yeah that's pretty much the end there um just a quick review and recap of the season uh personally i like the season one and season one um it, it's I, a great I, I would say it's two um two as well actually um yeah i it, know it, because be- oh, sorry uh continue what yeah, yeah mainly because of that ending because of how it comes together so well at the ending and what happens and all of this other stuff yeah. i just thought what it did there was really really well done i thought the season would have been longer frankly the way how it was shaping up but yeah 11 episodes was fine i thought we would have got two extra episodes this season but the way how it, it ends is like yeah this is a perfect end to the season right. great character yeah. growth for everybody um great character moments um just just some solid 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 material overall it's not the zany twin peaks kind of bullshit that you had from season one season one was no. good it had a, a, a zany this did. You know, the invisible car and all of this bullshit. But this season get real dark and dark and important in all the right ways. And yeah, it totally yeah. worked. And yeah, hats off. Hats off to Donald Glover and Hero Mirai for this season. It's just so well done. Really well shot. Um, it, It's shot better than season one, in my opinion, because it really feels much more workably cinematic. Again, I, I don't know if I noticed it after looking back, but it looks the use of grain and the use of some cinematic techniques just works better overall. And yeah, I just really, really like this season. I'm a big, big fan of the show. I absolutely love season one. And I actually enjoy season two even more, personally. I thought it was great. I forgot what I gave my rating. Okay, I think I gave my rating very, very high now um, for season one. Um, but for season two, yeah, I'd like to give this one a, 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 like a next to 10, uh, almost perfect score. Um, <laughs> yeah, wow. it very only only one or two episodes really kind of hampered it, but it still worked. Like, it still had to take, as, as I said, the, the only the Champagne Papi episode really kind of bungled things a little bit. It was not a bad episode, but it, right. it threw off the momentum a little bit. That was about it. Everything else was perfect for me. I thought every episode served a purpose. Everything worked in terms of character moment. And then they really say Robin season. Yeah, Robin season. They make it work. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Uh, it, it was a totally a love, 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 loveless episode. The little highlights of this season. Um, the Michael, what is Michael Vick? 
funny, funny point. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was a great, great moment in that episode. Um, Baby's character, I totally, I love that. I love that episode because it had so much, um, you know, with his Thundercat and Flylo in it, in terms of the music. Oh, yes, yes, and yes. That totally the, the fit, the that totally fit the nature of the episode. Yep. Um, what else? Um, yeah, well, of course, of course, Teddy Perkins, excellent episode. Excellent Everything about episode, that episode totally excellent, worked. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Right. And yeah, yeah, the, just the arcs of the characters, I just really, really enjoyed this season. It's a great, great season. It yeah. didn't respect or feel too over the top or anything like that. Everything felt grounded and workable. Um, again, it still lives in this weird kind of Twin Peaks parallel reality kind of thing, but it totally works in the context of the storyline. Yeah. Excellent show. Love the show. All right. Same, same here too. Dude, I totally agree with you. Um, this season yeah. too was great even better than the first season like um i mean first yeah. season yeah you, you you get introduced to donald glover's version of atlanta so no it's not how atlanta yeah. really is but it feels authentic even though they have these kind of twin peak x um, kind of moments um yeah it does have little weird stuff in between but i mean that's all style and substance as well um but it yeah. doesn't take away from the core of the story what it's really about you know just about normal everyday people you know living life and trying to get by you know what i mean but just the stuff yeah. that they go through and their flaws getting in the way and that's what a yeah, lot of and, and, the show you know right um, and really it really feels it really feels the type of show that it's it's millennials coming into their own you know especially we you know with the with the with the aspect of race involved because it doesn't feel like a show like a girls or um even even something like insecure where okay that's more general aspects of it i mean uh, girls girls is a show that i didn't give a chance and I gave a chance later and I ended up enjoying all more than I expected. All right, but I haven't that's even kind of work. watching girls yet. Right, that's, that's kind of a working comparison. If it, and I don't want to make a race thing out of it because, but that's that's the, the working context, obviously. Um, but yeah, um, this this really, really makes the whole, the millennial struggle. What the millennials have yes, to go through yes. in terms of emotions. It's not the same thing. It's not the same as the, the Gen X generation. You really get to see, well, Donald Glover is at that age where it, this is where millennials are really coming into their own in terms of understanding the world in the early 30s um that workable struggle and again especially post financial crisis so how to make money how to make sense of the world what yes. the new struggles are the advent of the internet and how that affects things um and and, and everything comes to so well in this it's very very well written in that sense of course yeah, um yeah. and as you mentioned that yes the writing is strong throughout though um I love the characterization yeah. I love the performances I mean Donald Glover kills it as usual as right. beats um that guy, I keep forgetting his name, who plays Paperboy. Yeah, everybody does. Right. Um, everybody does a fantastic job. I mean, like Keith Stanfield. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. I was gonna say the music choices are on point. It does feel like real sudden hip hop kind of, you know, kind of shit. Um, yeah. What else? But just the themes of it, just the, the stuff that the characters go through. It's very yeah. dark, but it's very relatable as well. You know, you do feel for these characters, um, in some way, shape, or form. Um. This is a huge step up from, from the first season. I'll say that much. Just offer okay. that one episode alone, Teddy Perkins, which, yeah. like I say, is just one yeah, of the greatest moments in TV history. Um, I like that. it, uh, And I would say, well, um, it also kind of expands the world of Atlanta. You really do get to see more of it. You do see get to see more interactions with different characters and just, just this world now that feels real, but, you know, it's kind of a fabrication but it's really you know really it's right it's it, it what it does worry well is just working surrealism of things now it's yes. like all right the the world itself like just the zaniness of how people just think like the bb episode the character with the, with the baba yeah, yeah it how a lot of people just think like that a lot of people operate like that it's kind of a lackadaisical waste your time kind of behavior but they have a really good talent and they serve the world really really well yeah so that's why nothing about it it's zany but it still has a um i don't know what to call it i, I use a big word called verisimilitude where it's fantasy, but it has, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all know that word, right? But it's fantasy, but what it is, it's tapping into your your psyche, no? yes. not really a real. Obviously, it's not real, but it feels real. You know yeah. that that aspect to the situation, and yeah, yeah it, it works and, in and that it's sense. So self aware that you know, yeah, I mean, of course, there's not a real invisible card, duh, but you understand right. why it's there. You know, what I mean, it's 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 like that. It's it's something that not many people could do, but fortunately. Dog lover, his team pull it off, can pull it off, and yeah. they, they have done it here, you know. Um, I yeah. can't wait to see what they do with, with season three. Uh, you know, I just hope that Donald just keeps on just getting better and better in terms of writing and you know, just storytelling and acting as well. Too, I mean, to me, he could do no wrong in, in my eyes, but you know, I just want yeah. season three to be even better than this one here. So, yeah, sky's the limit here, but I don't want it to go to the point that we have, um, you know, like. 
eight seasons or god forbid we do like a deep no yeah this, i don't know i don't know how and then yeah i don't know how long a show like this and then we get the the next season right. you know what i mean no right I, yeah i don't know how long a show like this could go on but again stuff like girls didn't go on that long like stuff to me things like three three four seasons at most is what you could do like yeah. Yeah, i just have to tell a story and a slice of life you now you don't have to go on forever and then at the end then you'll do some time skip and say oh well this is what Donald Glover turned out to be this character this is what Earn and Paperboy are doing now or whatever it is in the future right. Right. Uh, maybe or maybe not I'm not sure um, shows like this don't need to go on more than four seasons in my opinion frankly you know if it end, in fact if they tell me three seasons and I'll be happy with something like that because yeah. I want a good solid story and an arc I hate this going on forever bullshit um, uh, yeah so, I, I agree with you too you know at, at some point I mean I just stop man but yeah um, right. for me this gets a strong four to five um one of right. the best shows of the year, hands down. Just offer that one episode alone, but don't just go in expecting that Teddy Perkins is going to be the only good thing about this 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 season. You know, no. there's so much, no. so much more, yeah, moments, almost, so much Richard. more emotional moments, so much gut punches as well. But you still have that slice of life humor as well. You have that, you know, that African American style of humor as well, and just yeah. great storytelling and direction and acting and just everything overall. So yeah, it's right. perfect for me. Not a ten out of ten for yeah. me at the moment, but you know, I just want this show to just get better and better. So yeah, I can't wait to see what happens next in ETL, man.